My name is Hefsi Barr Kaplan and uh, I'm co-founder and director of London Art Therapy Centre. Sean McNiff, he's a veteran art therapist, he's a prolific author and very experienced teacher. He's taught art therapists from all around the world in many countries and he retains a compassion and a humanity in his practice as well as a playfulness and openness. If I look like a little bit like an evangelical here. <laughs> I am. <laughs> An evangelist of art. Yes. Amen. A missionary. A missionary of art. In the UK, art therapy scene at the moment, where people have been feel rather downtrodden by um, the institutions that they might work in. And we wanted Sean just to invigorate our practices, which certainly happen today, and also to learn from him and be inspired by his approaches. As Suzanne K. Langer used to say, there's only one word for dancing, playing the violin, writing poetry, painting pictures, and that word is art. I've always struggled with this fragmentation, this uh, division of, of the individual psyche, this division of the collective community psyche into all of these institutional entities. And the synthesis goes against the grain because the society and institutions are hardwired to separate everything, to separate art from art, the arts from one another. So that's going to be one of the themes of the day. And um, the increasing and in new fragmentation of practice from research. That's a big issue for us today. In recent years, there's been a tightening of medical regulations, a more rigid view of looking at things, trying to be objective about things that are actually not easy to be objective about, and a sort of drift to a more mechanistic form of medicine away from the holism. One of the things that those of us uh, working with the arts, with the arts in therapy, with the arts in education, with the arts in public health, with the arts in community, we have to believe in the artistic evidence and its ability to speak to people in the world and not feel that we have to translate what we do into some other language or some other paradigm that is just going to keep marginalizing us. Who are the people to understand or to conduct research? They really need to be clinicians who also understand a bit about statistics. And yet, there are people analyzing medicine today and how we treat people today who do not practice. They are not clinicians. Everything I do is research. From the first day I started doing this work, uh, re research is about reflection on practice and perfecting it, examining it, studying it, and relating it to what others do. Your own uh, Alastair McIntyre said, social science has, has never really generated any conclusive uh, uh, laws of human nature. Th think about that one for a minute. He said, social science would be better focused on perfecting practice, learning how to do it as well as you can. Becoming practitioner researchers that, that reflect upon what you do and show it. Art is the evidence. So we're going to practice witnessing, and that is one of you continues working, and the other is just silently with. I keep saying art-based research is really all about improving practice. Art is as simple as breath. Present moment, present moment, breathe in, breathe out. And just make a movement. We're moving all the time. We are in dance. We are in it. We are in creation at every moment of our lives. Did the witness propel you? Did the witness inhibit you? And, and, and what was it like to be witnessed? Because this is what happens to the people that we work with, and we never practice it ourselves. This is so intimate, so intimately by another person. Please, 
feel free, talk away. I said at the beginning of the day, it's all about what you do here today. And this is going to be a day of art-based research. You're going to do something empirically, and then we're going to reflect on that. And one of the things that we did today, it's something that's very close to me, and that is interpreting uh, artworks through bodily movement. To a certain extent, words don't get nearly as close. They don't get nearly as intimate with the expression of that artwork, that image that comes from movement, that carries energy within itself. They don't, the words don't get nearly as close as the subtle, graceful, tender movements do that are made in response to the art. Just do it the way you're feeling it right here. Don't try to literally replicate the movements of that painting. Feel that image and move in response to it. It was like letting go in a safe space. So I didn't feel there were critical voices around. And it felt like a real privilege to do that and play. Because quite honestly, if I can't do that, how can I expect other people to do that? It's a very, very powerful thing to translate from one arts medium to another and we don't do it enough so I think to have something that crosses boundaries in that way is, is, is really good, really helpful and something we should do more of. To see the attention and the care with which my partner really imagined herself into my drawing, my experience of making marks and, and then also how differently she experienced it helped me to understand a bit of my own experience in the moment, but then also, I suppose, some of the layers and some of the complexity that might have been out of awareness while I was making it. He's still using those, um, those values and strengths that actual art practice brings of noticing, of really looking, of attending to those little details of how someone breathes, how they use the art materials, how they relate to one another, and then helping them to use that to really sh show, emphasize, amplify, show people those gestures, and then be seen. These things don't happen without the community of people witnessing and holding the process for everyone. As we said today, having their back, making the place totally supportive, totally non-judgmental, and, uh, and uh, totally safe. Today was really about co-creation and collaboration of all the art therapists that came to learn and be inspired by Sean. Looking at the way he works, re-energizes us, looking at the passion that he has for using the arts and for really living in a more soulful way is so good for art therapists because self-care is such an important part of the journey. We try so hard to meet our clients' needs and I think sometimes we forget how to use that creative process to nourish ourselves as well. As art therapists, as those of us who work with the arts, who work with other people through the arts, it's essential that we ourselves continue to be practitioners, continue to practice and experience the process firsthand. With 120 art therapists that came today, seeing all these different clients and all the different sectors, I'm sure a lot of people are going to feel really good this week.